afternoon. Is the scheduled start time of the House Committee members please take your seat? I call to order the meeting. Item 1 on the agenda, confirmation of minutes of meeting. Minutes of the 29th meeting held on the 9th of July 2021. The minutes have been forwarded to members before the meeting. So far, no members have proposed any amendments to the minutes. Can I invite members to confirm the minutes, please? Minutes confirmed. Item 2 on the agenda, matters arising. Report by the Chairman on her meeting with the Chief Secretary for Administration. The Chief Secretary expressed gratitude to members for completing the scrutiny and passing the Employment Amendment Bill 2021 at the meeting council meeting last week. He considered the deliberations stringent and efficient. It's a um, good demonstration that uh, the Legislative Council is to monitor the work of the government and uh, w and then the two bodies work together on uh, go the governors of Hong Kong. He uh, thanks um, the House Committee for scheduling an additional meeting at the on the 23rd of July to consider bills to receive first and second reading at the council meeting of the 21st of July. If I may remind members, I already issued a doc uh, paper to remind members there will be a house committee meeting on the 23rd of July. Item 3 on the agenda, business arising from previous council meetings. A legal service division reports on bills referred to the house committee in accordance with Rule 54, bracket 4. One legal practitioners amendment bill 2021 legal advisor please take us through the bill briefly thank you thank you madam chair our report is in paper number ls 92 stroke 20 to 21 the bill seeks to amend the legal practitioners ordinance so that a person not being a barrister who holds the office as a legal officer is eligible to be appointed as a senior counsel upon meeting certain requirements the for those appointed to senior counsel, they could only use this title while they are in the relevant post. If the bill uh, is passed, then it will come to operation on the day on which enacted ordinance is published in the Gazette. The administration has briefed the legal professions on the proposal. So the uh, uh, Hong Kong Law Society and other, some other uh, groups uh, support uh, the bill, but the uh, Bar Association has uh, 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 expressed opposition. The panel on administration of justice and legal services was uh, briefed on the 21st of Ju June this year, and general members support uh, the proposal, but uh, they've expressed various concerns as well. We are now um, seeking a reply from the administration on certain legal drafting aspects. Uh, members may consider whether to form a bill's committee to study the bill in detail. If necessary, we may give a further report later. Thank you, Madam uh, Legal Advisor. Members, do you wish to form a bill's committee on the bill? Ms. Eunice Young, Mr. Peter Shiel, two members. We need one more member. Mr. Tony Jie. And Dr. Junius Ho, so Clark, please note the members who are joining the bill committee. And uh, for those who wish to join, please raise your hand so the clerk could uh, make a note of that. Two, sale of goods, United Nations Convention Bill. Can I invite the legal advisor to take us through the bill briefly, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Our report is in paper number LS 93, stroke 20 to 21, the bill. Seeks to implement the United Nations Convention on Contracts for the International Sale of Goods in Hong Kong. The convention uh, sets out a um, uniform um, rules uh, governing contracts for the international sale of goods. The tax is in the schedule to the bill. There are 101 articles in the convention. Uh, in, uh, according to the bill, the um, text of the convention has is over, uh, overrides uh, um, any um, laws and regulations in Hong Kong if there, are any, if there is any contradiction. So the text uh, of the convention shall prevail. And if the um, bill is passed, then the convention will uh, automatically apply to contracts um, um, signed with the international bodies, but there, there is an opt-out mechanism. 
So both parties could uh, agree not to adopt the convention, or they could uh, choose to uh, adopt some of the r rules uh, or adapt some of the rules as, as they see fit. The panel on administration and just of justice and legal services was consulted on a policy related to bill at three meetings between 2019 and 2022. No objections were raised as various concerns were expressed. Uh, there was also a public consultation conducted. Uh, in general, um, most uh, expressed support, but the General Chamber of Commerce uh, expressed reservation. Now, this bill may have um, implications on the international contract of sales, so members may consider to form a bills committee. Does... Members, do you wish to form a bills committee, Mr. Holden Chow? Are there any other members asking to form a bills committee or to join the committee? Mr. Wang Ting Kong, we need three members, please. Mrs. Stephen Ho. Members, please circulate a paper to uh, uh, invite um, members to join the Bills Committee. Item 3, Landlord and Tenant Consolidation Amendment Bill 2021. Legal advisor, please take us through the bill briefly. Our report is in paper number LS91-20-21. The bill seeks to amend the Landlord and Tenant Consolidation Ordinance to regulate tenancies of subdivided units of buildings so it's to impose tenancy control the key uh, controls measures are um, SDU tenants will enjoy security of tenure for up to four years and also there's a cap on the rate of rent increase um, the, the reference has to be made to the reference index uh, of all domestic buildings uh, by published by the um, uh, rate and rating evaluation department uh, also there are restrictions on certain hidden clauses and uh, there are various uh, offenses in relation to um, the bill to safeguard the rights and interests of uh, tenants the bill will come into operation on the expiry of three months uh, beginning on the day on which it is published in the Gazette. The housing the sub, uh, panel and the reference subcommittee uh, were consulted and in April this year, the subcommittee considered the proposal. Members of the subcommittee and the panel in general support uh, the tenancy control uh, arrangement and they've expressed views on various issues. The Legal Service Division is still scrutinizing the legal and drafting aspects of the bill. Well, this is the new tenancy control regime, so members may consider forming a bills committee to study the bill in detail. Members, do you wish to form a bills committee? Yes, uh, for those uh, who would like to join, please raise your hands. Clark, please um, make note of that. Okay, the clerk is making a note. Four, Telecommunications Amendment Bill 2021. Legal Advisor, please take us through the bill briefly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our report is in paper number LS 95-20-21. to The bill is to implement the um, rep recommendations pr proposed in the review of telecommunications regulatory framework is to promote um, the development of 5G and also make sure the regulatory framework will move with the times and um, keep and tie in with the latest de technological development for the key measures first uh, there's uh, is to uh, there will be introduction of non carry licenses so in terms of the coverage of uh, telecommunication services, the scale and uh, user groups and so on, there will be relatively more restrictions. And for the proposed non-carrier licenses, the Secretary for Commercial uh, and Economic Development will specify the license and, uh, and that uh, notice is not a um, form of legislation. The Ministry explains it's to allow flexibility. So that um, um, in the 5G era, the reference sector could launch the service as soon as possible. Another important uh, amendment has to do with requirements relating to work near underground telecommunications lines. 
So for those uh, carrying out works, they have to take reasonable steps and to make sure whether there are underground um, telecommunications lines near the um, works site and they have to take uh, various measures to prevent uh, damage uh, to the lines or disruption of telecommunications service if uh, uh, there's a violation is a criminal offence. If the bill is passed, uh, it will come into operation on the day uh, um, appointed uh, by uh, published by notice in the Gazette. Now the panel on, on uh, t information technology broadcasting was consulted uh, on the 19th of April. Members in general supported the measures, and we're still scrutinising legal and drafting aspects of the bill. Members, do you wish to form a bills committee? Mr. Gary Chan, Dr. Elizabeth, Qu uh, Miss Elizabeth Quad. We need three members to um, form a committee. Okay, uh, Miss Horace Chang. So, members, please raise your hands if you wish to join the committee, and the clerk will circulate papers. Five. Mandatory provident fund schemes amendment bill 2021. Legal advisor, please take us through the bill briefly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our report is in paper number LS 96 to 20 to 21. The bill seeks to amend the mandatory provident fund schemes ordinance and this subsidiary legislation to provide for a common electronic system to facilitate administration and implementation of uh, MPF schemes. Uh, well, this common electronic system is um, commonly referred to as the EMPF platform. So the um, uh, of, uh, operational frameworks and uh, the, the functions of the platform are spelled out and uh, trustees have to make use of this platform, so it's mandatory. On fees and charges, now there will be costs saved uh, from after the implementation of the EPMF uh, platform, so the bill proposes to add new provisions to allow uh, approved uh, trustees uh, to adjust their management uh, administration fees. Now, uh, if the bill is passed, most of the provisions will come into operation on the day of Gazetto. The panel on the financial affairs was consulted on the proposals on the 4th of January. Members have asked uh, the administration meet with the reference sector to address their concerns. Now, this bill is a lengthy one. We're still con studying the Bill and members may consider whether to form a bills committee to study the bill in detail. Members, do you wish to form a bills committee on the bill? Now, members, if you wish to join, please raise your hands. Thank you. Look, Number six, Dangerous Goods Miscellaneous Amendments Bill 2021. Can the legal advisor walk us through the bill, please? The report is carried in LC paper number LS94-20-21. The bill makes amendments to various enactments consequential to the change of the regulatory and classification system. The amendments to the DG classification system um, is to align with the international classification system and the second item seeks to amend the schedules to the regulations such that um, regulations could be made on the control of DGs and public offices are empowered to specify the forms of licenses in an administrative manner instead of requiring the form to be provided by the regulations. If the bill is passed it will come into operation on the date of Gazetto by the Secretary for Security. The panel on security was consulted on the 3rd of November 2020 and members gen generally supported the bill. We are scrutinizing the bill and will make a further report if necessary. Can members please consider whether a bills committee would be set up? Do members wish to set up a bills committee? If so, please raise your hands. B. Legal Service Division Report on Subsidiary Legislation Gazetted on the 9th of July 2021. Legal Advisor, please. The report is carried in LS 97 slash 20 to 21, and the report contains three items of subsidiary legislation. LN 109, 
amends the schedule to the Minor Employment Claims Adjudication Board Ordinance and it amends or adjusts upwards the jurisdictional limit of the Minor Employment Claims Adjudication Board or MECAB from $8,000 to $15,000 per claimant at, or an increase of 85%. And the claims the right of action of which arose on or after the 17th of September 2021 or not wholly before that date and made by not more than 10 claimants would be eligible. On the 15th of November, the Labour 25th of November 2020, the Labour Advisory Board was consulted and the members generally supported the proposal and the panel on manpower was also consulted on 19th of January. The LN came into operation will come into operation on the 17th of September this year. Do members wish to set up a subcommittee to follow up on this item? Please continue. The second item is LN110. It specifies or appoints the 17th of December as the date on which the Peak Tramway Safety Amendment Regulation 2018 will come into operation. The notice amends the definition of tram car and to increase tram car capacity from the maximum load of 120 passengers to 210 passengers. Earlier, a subcommittee was set up on the safety regulations and the amendment supports the implementation of the upgrading plan for peak tramway. That's all for my report for LN110. Do members wish to set up a subcommittee on LN110? Mr. Ronak Chan, Mr. Yu Si Wing, we need a minimum of three. Mr. Cheng Himpo. Legal advisor, the final item is LN111. This is a legal notice made under the United Nations Sanctions Libya um, regulation and it imposes certain sanctions against Libya according to the Security Council of the United Nations and it came into operation on July the 9th um, which was the date of Gazetto and according to the United Nations um, sanctions um, reg regulations the item is not required to be tabled and not subject to amendment. Do members wish to set up a subcommittee on LN111? For items of subsidiation already tabled into LegCo on July the 14th, the deadline for making amendments would be the council meeting on July the 21st. If it is extended by resolution, it would be extended to the legislative council meeting on September the 1st. Members, please note that at the council meeting on July the 21st, I will move an amendment to amend the, to extend the amendment deadline for the scrutiny of the subsidiary legislation. Further business for the council meeting of 21st of July 2021 Report of the House Committee on Subsidiary Legislation and Other Instruments, number 23-20-21. A draft of the report was shared with members before the meeting, and no members indicated that they would speak on the subsidiary legislation. A. Government Bill's first reading and second reading debate to be adjourned. 1. Personal Data Privacy Amendment Bill 2021. 2. Financial Reporting Council Amendment Bill 2021. The House Committee will deal with the two bills above at the Council meeting on July the 23rd. B. Members' motion on subsidiary legislation. Proposed resolution to extend the period for amending subsidiary legislation to be moved by Mr. Holden Chow. The proposed resolution seeks to extend the amendment deadline for the Financial Institutions Resolution Contractual Recognition of Suspension of Termination Rights Banking Sector Rules to the Council meeting on August 25th. 
five reports of bills committees and subcommittees. A report of the Subcommittee on Fire Service Installations and Equipment Amendment Regulation 2021. I invite Mr. Vincent Chang, Chairman of the Subcommittee, to speak. Thank you. The, Madam Chair, the Subcommittee has completed scrutiny of the Fire Service Installations and Equipment Amendment Regulation 2021. The Amendment Regulation seeks to exempt owners and occupants of buildings and premises from the statutory duty under the Fire Service Installations and Equipment Regulations. They could then install standalone fire detectors on their own without the need to engage registered fire service installation contractors to install, maintain, inspect or repair such detectors or to inspect such detectors at least once in every 12 months. For members express support for the amendment regulation to encourage the public to install standalone fire detectors in buildings and premises of their own volition so there will be an early warning to building occupants for timely evacuation in case of a fire. In the course of deliberations, members discussed the quality, installation, and maintenance of standalone fire detectors. The administration explained that uh, standalone fire detectors available in the market do not require any specific skill in installation and maintenance and are highly reliable. Members of the public could purchase and install these in detectors on their own. The administration will introduce a pilot scheme for volunteers from the Fire Services Department of SD to visit target domestic units and assist the residents, in particular the elderly and the ethnic minority, to install store standalone fire detectors. FSD will also be launching promotion activities to educate the public on the use of standalone fire detectors. On members' concerns about the fire safety in old tenement buildings, the administration informed that sets of fire extinguisher and fire blanket will soon be distributed to households in districts where there are relatively more free new buildings and subdivided units to safeguard the safety of residents in old buildings. The subcommittee would not be proposing any amendments to the amendment regulation. The subcommittee will submit a written report in due course. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cheng. B. Report of the Subcommittee on Telecommunications Registration of SIM Cards Regulation. I invite uh, Mr. Wang Teng Kwan, Chairman of the Subcommittee, to speak and to submit the report. Madam Chair, thank you. The subcommittee has completed the scrutiny of the telecommunications registration of SIM cards regulation. This subsidy legislation seeks to introduce the real name registration program for SIM cards registration program. The subcommittee has held one meeting with the administration to discuss the subsidiary legislation. Members noted that the administration previously conducted public consultation on the registration program and increased the cap on prepaid SIM PPS cards per operator for individual and corporate users after taking into account the views of the public and the industry. Some members expressed concern that allowing users to hold so many cards may make enforcement more difficult. Some other members, however, were of the view that the cap on PPS cards per corporate user under the subsidiary legislation was still not enough and might cause inconvenience to companies. Members have also queried how operators would verify and authenticate the information provided by users the duration of keeping users, personal information, and so on. There was a discussion and questions were raised to the administration. The subcommittee supports the, the subsidiary legislation. The deliberations of the subcommittee are detailed in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong Teng Kwong. C. Subcommittee. Report of the Subcommittee on Building Minor Works Amendment Regulation 2021 and Buildings Ordinance Resolution of the Legislative Council and Commencement Notice. I, I will invite uh, Mr. Holden Child, Chairman, to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Building Minor Works Amendment Regulation 2021 seeks to amend the validation scheme under the Minor Works Control System, MWCS, to cover an additional 11 types of unauthorized minor amenity features involving 21 prescribed buildings or P building works PWO items. The Buildings Ordinance Resolution of the Legislative Council Commencement Notice 
provides for the commencement of the resolution on the 1st of September 2021 to dovetail with the commencement date of the amendment regulation. The resolution was proposed under Section 23 of the two bracket free of the building ordinance and was passed on the 13th of May 2021. The subcommittee has held one meeting and has completed the scrutiny work. Members in general welcome the two pieces of subsidiary legislation. Some members suggested that the administration should give the buildings department the discretion to allow building owners to erect structures similar to the amenity features involving the 21 items under NWCS to continue to use such existing unauthorized amenity features after validation in meeting owners' practical needs. The administration indicated that the details of the 21 items are stipulated in the amendment regulation. If the details of minor works items and the 21 items are to be changed, there is a need to first consult the sector before amending the reference legislation to implement the change. Some members inquired how the buildings department would handle unauthorized features involving the 21 new items between now and the commencement of the subsidiary legislation on the 1st of September this year. They suggested the buildings department to suspend the reference enforcement actions so owners could seek validation of the features after the 1st of September and need not demolish these features now. The administration indicated that owners should comply with removal orders on specified works as soon as possible. If owners have any queries about individual cases or the content of um, such orders in their compliance, they could contact the Buildings Department. The subcommittee would not be proposing any amendments to the two pieces of subsidiary legislation. The subcommittee would submit a written report in due course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Report of the Subcommittee on Seven Pieces of Subsidiary Legislation Relating to the Implementation of the New Inspection Regime of the Companies Register under the Company's Ordinance. I invite Mr. Ronick Chan, Chairman of the Subcommittee, to deliver a verbal report. Chairman, the purpose of the seven items of subsidiary legislation relating to the new inspection regime under the company's ordinance is to implement the new regime under the ordinance which has yet to be commenced and provide for related requirements. Upon implementation of the new regime, all searchers will be able to access the correspondence address and partial identification numbers or IDNs of a director on the company's register. Protected information which includes usual residential addresses or ERAs and full IDNs can only be obtained by specified persons upon application. The subcommittee held one meeting with the administration and members generally supported the new inspection regime to enhance the protection of personal data and minimize doxing and misuse of personal data. Some members asked that with the new regime in place, how the administration can effectively ensure that searches can effectively ascertain the, the identity of the director concerned under these two scenarios. One, individual directors who use different patterns of their name to register different companies, that is the um, same director, different name scenario. And two, different directors with identical full, na identical full name and partial IDN, that is the different directors, same name scenario. The administration indicated that under the new inspection regime, the company's registry will step up enforcement of disclosure requirement on directors' names. That is, the director's name must match the name carried on their identification document. In the first scenario, the integrated company's registry information system will identify and consolidate the records of the director's concern and display the combined information to the searcher. In the second scenario, the system will provide additional digits of the IDNs to ensure that searches could tell that the directors are different individuals. Some members propose adding labor unions who often provide support to employees in recovering age wage defaults to the list of specified persons, while others ask whether media organizations can make an application to obtain protected information on the register on the grounds of public interest in order to conduct journalistic investigations. In response, the administration indicated that the list of specified persons was drawn up based on whether work related to statutory procedures, legal liabilities and enforcement require protected information of company directors. The new regime has struck a reasonable balance between the public's right to continue to inspect the register and the needs for professionals and other searchers who are not specified persons to ascertain the identity 
of directors. The administration stresses that the new regime would not impose any unfair treatment on any individuals or attempts to restrict freedom of the press. Some members urged the CR to establish express application procedures to allow specified persons to access protected information on the CR when needed to fulfill their duties. Some members also urged the administration to enhance the monitoring of protected information obtained through abuse of the inspection regime by specified persons. The subcommittee and administration will not move amendments on the seven items of subsidiary legislation. The subcommittee will submit a written report in due course. Thank you. E. Seventh report of the subcommittee on subsidiary legislation relating to the prevention and control of disease. I invite the deputy chairman of the subcommittee, Mr. UC Wing to deliver a report. Chairman, in June this year, the subcommittee submitted its sixth report to the House Committee and subsequently another meeting was held with the administration to complete the scrutiny of the two items of subsidiary legislation relating to prevention and control of disease. Some members expressed concern over the implementation of the subsidiary legislation with regards to the requirement that um, for cruise to nowhere itineraries, passengers must produce a negative result of a PCR nucleic acid test taken within 48 hours prior to boarding. Some members propose relaxing the requirement to within 72 hours before boarding, and some members also express concern on the impacts of the control measures to prevent importation of cases. Some members propose that staff at the airport and quarantine hotels must first complete vaccination and obtain a positive result in the serology antibody test and to reinforce the suspension mechanism. Some members also express concern over the submission of reports by the chief executive to the central authorities in order to resume travel with the mainland and the latest epidemic control measures in relation to the Singaporean government and whether the administration will resume the discussions over any air travel bubble arrangement. Some members also require the government to produce a timetable and roadmap on enhancing the vaccination rate and require civil servants, school staff and teachers, as well as healthcare workers to be vaccinated. Some also express concern over cases of hijacking of the vaccination records of other individuals. The subcommittee will not make any amendments on the subsidiary legislation and will submit a written report in due course. The 13 items of subsidiary legislation for the five subcommittees above the deadline for making amendments will be the Legislative Council meeting on August the 18th. And if members wish to make any amendments, the period for making notice um, would expire on August the 11th. Six position on bills, committees, and subcommittees. As of July the 15th, six bills committees were in action. One of the bills committees will continue scrutiny work um, three months after um, they Begin, began work. Another seven subcommittees under the House Committee and nine subcommittees on policy issues under panels were in action. Number seven, any other business? There is none. Thank you very much.